Hi everyone, welcome to another art tutorial with me Laura and today we're going to be looking at watercolour and we're going to be specifically looking at white in watercolour and there's a kind of strange snobbery when it comes to using white in watercolour as if people that use white paint um, or masking fluid it's some kind it's somehow kind of cheating and uh, but it's totally not you can totally use white paint and masking fluid to mark out shades of white in your watercolour paintings but it is possible to actually use the advantage of a white canvas for creating light and white in a watercolour painting so in this tutorial I really wanted to show you how to create a little simple seascape like this one here and how to get white clouds and white waves without using any white paint or masking fluid so that's what we're going to do today a little short uh, tutorial, a little small canvas here, and we're going to give that a try. So the first thing I like to do is to mark out a horizon with some masking tape. And I don't like to put it right in the middle, I like to put it slightly above or slightly below. It just makes more of a dynamic painting. So I'm just going to put it slightly above and I'm just using masking tape. I'm just going to put it on there gently and the first thing we're going to work on is the sky so for the sky we're just going to use uh, a sort of nice sky blue color so cerulean blue or cinereous blue i think my watercolor one's called but just a nice sort of blue sky color i want it a little bit watery i don't want it too dark and what we're going to do is we're going to mark out some clouds so and these Try not to make them too, too perfect. We want them really sort of point, sort of pointy and lots going on. And then once we've got our little line like that, we're just going to colour in before it gets too dry. So you don't want to leave a mark. We're just going to colour in the rest of the sky. like that and if you want to while it's still a little bit wet you can just use a tissue and just take off some of the paint and what that does will create some lighter clouds behind like so showing up too well the lighter clouds on camera we're just going to just above our cloud line our sharp cloud line I'm just going to take off some of the paint and you can't quite see it at the moment but we're going to let that dry and then what we want to do is take a more sort of dirty blue so we're going to take some Payne's grey quite light Payne's grey and add a touch of that blue to make a dirty blue and making sure it's quite watery we're going to go and create some shadow for our clouds, but don't go right up to that line. We want to leave that line as if it's catching the sun and it's really, really bright white. Like so. It creates a nice shadow. Hopefully you can see that on camera, I'll show you better at the end. And that's our sky pretty much done. And we're going to just add a little bit more of the blue, a darker blue, so less watery. And we're going to just follow where you've dabbed out some of the blue. You can follow that, just create some more clouds. And bring some of it down here like that and you can always just use a little bit of water just to blend some of that in if the bottom line is a little bit too sharp these higher clouds and there we go that's our little sky complete so then what we can do is remove our masking tape once it's dry and uh, if it's a little bit too sticky your masking tape and just use a hair dryer to loosen heat up the glue I'm going to take that off and then making sure that's completely dry before we move on 
Then once your sky is completely dry, we're going to use the masking tape again and we're going to put it the other side of our horizon line. And we're just going to stick it there. We don't want to stick over the whole of the painting just in case we damage the painting. And we're going to work on our sea. So for our water, we want to go back to the Payne's grey. So a nice sort of dark blue colour, almost black. And we're going to add in some more sort of ultramarine blue. So we've got this nice, very rich, dark blue. And starting on our horizon line, we're going to create, leave little bits of the white canvas unpainted. So it's quite good if your brush almost dries out as well, so it isn't very watery. We want very, very thin lines in the distance and then bigger ones in the foreground, up to where our waves, our main wave's going to be. So we're going to go across that horizon line and we're just going to start leaving little bits of white as if like they're little crests of waves and as you get further down just make them a little bit bigger and even sort of coming at an angle as well and then when you get further down we're going to work out where our main wave is going to be so we're going to just draw our main wave in and it's going up at a slight angle like that and then we can just colouring it above. Again, just leaving some little streaks. Like so. We can just go over some of those blue bits. Just be quite free with it. Don't Don't be too sort of worried if you lose some of the white there we go but then for the underneath of the wave we want it to be more turquoisey so we're going to take some of that ultramarine blue so the same blue we used for the top half but i'm going to mix it with some green rather than Payne's gray so this green i'm using is fl flallow green i can't even pronounce that <laughs> so just a nice limey green color so we get this nice turquoise and we're going to paint the underneath of the wave. Now we're going to imagine the wave is crashing over in this direction and then is sort of coming up to here and you've got another crash of the wave coming over there. And we're going to do the same with this turquoisey green as we did with the darker blue and just create some little white quite bigger pieces of white to about there. Then we're going to stop and leave this for sand. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of the more watered down version of that turquoise, just slightly over the top as well. I do like these little streaks coming over. They look like the top of the wave. Okay, so it looks like a wave that's just about to crash. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create our sand. So we're going to take a sort of yellow ochre colour and we're going to use that mixed with mixed with some of that turquoise to create a sort of muddy green colour but this is going to be our wet sand so it's where this turquoise is meeting the sand and we're going to again we're going to leave a very tiny white gap it doesn't have to be perfect in between our turquoise and our wet sand and we can leave some little streaks of white if you want to but here it doesn't matter so much we're just going to paint it up to about here if you want to, you can mix a little bit in to the turquoise as well, so the colours blend. Great nice dark line under there. And then we're just going to use pure yellow ochre underneath. So just 
pure yellow ochre but again in between the wet sand and your dry sand is going to be your dry sand we're going to leave a little white line as well very slightly and you can see that immediately a bit too light there if you can see if I put a little bit of shadow on you can see that just looks like a very thin veil of water going over your sand and we're almost there we're just going to just go over some of the dark blues and the turquoises just to really bring that out so get some more of your ultramarine blue with a bit less watery with some of that lime green and being a little bit stronger we're just going to go underneath that wave because it's where the shadows the shadow of that wave is it needs to be nice and dark put some flows going like this and you can water it down make it a little bit more watery and lighter as it comes down towards the sand like that and we're going to do the same with the dark blue at the top so nice and dark we're just going to go over that horizon again trying to avoid the white bits we've left you can also leave some blue bits lighter blue bits if you want to and these will just start to look like little waves crests of waves in the distance try and make it darker underneath the white more than anything and I think we're pretty much there I think that's our little wave I think the only last thing to do is we're just going to add a little bit of the turquoise over the top of this dark blue and that's really just to blend the colours together There we go. In fact, we could possibly put a little bit of that dark blue right underneath. And then just blend that out with some water. Okay, like so. And there's our little beach scene completed using the white of the canvas for the crest of the waves. And then gently just peel off, hope there's no bleed on the horizon, peel off your canvas to match your sky. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed that little quick tutorial on how to use the white canvas to your advantage to create the crisp white edges of clouds and waves. So this is obviously a very quick little tutorial. And uh, let's have a look at some other examples. This was one that I did very similar to this one here. And also we've got a couple here as well. This one's obviously a little sunset, but again, using the white of the canvas to create the light from the sun on the waves. And this is another one here, sort of darker sunset again, no white paint used, just using the white of the canvas. So there's nothing wrong with using white paint though. If you do want to say you've missed, you've accidentally gone over your white canvas, you can add just add little touches of white paint. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I don't know why there's a weird snobbery on doing that. But if you want to, if you don't have any white paint and uh, you might just have a watercolor white that's very, very pale, and um, you don't have any masking fluid to mask out your canvas then this is a little quick tutorial on how to just use the canvas to your advantage but i'll see you soon for some more creative arty fun thanks for watching guys bye